Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and the success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm super excited and honored for today's guest, Justin Christensen. He's the best selling author, co founder, and president of Conversion Fanatics also the name of his book, self-proclaimed numbers junkie and a digital marketing veteran. He's also a father and a husband and a number one best-selling author of Conversion Fanatics, How to Double Your Customers, Sales Profits with A-B Testing. He's also the co-founder and president of Conversion Fanatics. It's a full-service conversion rate optimization company helping companies like Primal Life Organics, Burt's Bees, Dr. Axe, and many more improve their overall results. So I'm honored and welcoming Justin Christensen to Making Bank today. Hey, Josh, thanks for having me. Cool, man, bios are always fun. <laughs> they are, and I hate writing them. <laughs> I, me too, I don't even like to write. I'm like, just grab whatever you want and throw it together, I, I, I don't I really care. Stuff on the internet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, awesome, man. Super pumped. I know we've talked about getting you on the show and everything, and you guys are doing some amazing things, and I uh, really want to hear about your story and got what got you started you know, in entrepreneurship and everything. Oh, man. I think I've been in the digital marketing game, I think this is year 17. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so a few years. Luckily, my, father, my dad was a very entrepreneurial person starting a lot of different businesses and kind of being him controlling what the outcome was. And okay. I was very fortunate there to learn kind of the value of hard work and a dollar growing up in a ranching community. Uh, found network marketing way back in like 2000, 2001, and um, quickly figured out that I was terrible at asking people if they wanted to make some extra money. <laughs> right. So found internet marketing lead gen from there and moved up the ranks through affiliate marketing and became partners in an information publishing company for a few years and we grew it to uh, you know just shy of about 10 million in sales and annual sales. And I parted ways with that company, selling it back to my business partners. And because of some of the information that I published, they everybody was asking me like, what are you gonna do next? What's the implementation? You know, How can you help me? And I started a small consultancy and just me and a designer and just doing split tests and kind of setting up landing pages and partnered with my longtime friend uh, Manish who you know, and uh, he had a small team and we just built up what is now Conversion Fanatics. So, you know, I guess that was going on almost six years ago now that we oh, started. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. And it, <clears throat> I know one of the big things too is I, and you kind of, and it mentioned it in your intro, you know, I mean, just, you know, you got to kind of love the numbers. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think <laughs> too many people don't. And... Yeah, we get to work with uh, a lot of great companies that, you know, like you guys, even like with Primal Life and stuff there that you watch your numbers and you know and look and you ask questions and ask the right questions. Whereas some of the companies are like, oh, they freak out because something dips or something, you know, just changes slightly or normal variances. And we don't always get that, but it's, it's cool to be able to dive in and let the numbers kind of paint the picture and tell you what is going on or what issues are having or what kind of anomalies we're, we're seeing uh, so we can kind of rectify it and, and and move in the direction that we need to go. That's cool. What um, so, I mean, since we have a lot of online people that listen to the show and everything, um, for you guys, I mean, what are some of the biggest things that you've seen working with? I mean, you guys worked with a lot of big brands and everything mm -hmm. over the years. Um, what are some of the top kind of initial things when you first go to their site and start doing the split test and everything? You're like that always always pop out that you're just like. I know um, this is this and this. Yeah, some of the biggest things that we see first are, I guess, it's the purpose of the site is to get them engaged and find what they want quicker. So the faster we can get them looking for products, and I see a lot of companies really overlooking their homepage aspect in the e-commerce environment. And I even get companies saying, oh, we don't even drive traffic to our homepage. It's <laughs> like, well, it's the second or third or fourth most traffic page on your site. And they just completely overlook it. And as soon as we tweak that and kind of make it more product focused, because it's a glorified landing page, it isn't all about like one specific product sure. that's given them the description and giving them the price breakdown. It's more about here's who we are as a brand. Here's what we stand for. And here's why we have these amazing products. And building that trust and credibility there, I think is a big driver for a lot of companies if they focus on it. And I mean, we've even got a company right now 
that they were driving everything to a product page. And I just told them, I said, switch your traffic to the homepage. And he literally did. And they went from like a four X return on ad spend to a six and a half X. Wow. All because they just switched. It was the same ad, same creative because the homepage, I mean, it's high ticket items. So average tickets like $1,200, but it gave a better, bigger all overall picture of what the product was. And it got to explain it a lot easier than sending them to say a specific product page and Hey, buy my stuff. Um, so it was, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and, you know, just looking for those trends. So when we look at a site, we're just looking for where the visitors are at, where they're falling off and where they're going on the site and what friction could potentially be getting them from, you know, going there. Um, you know, client had a, he clicked the add to cart button and had a pop-up and then he had to click the pop-up to, you know, go to the cart drawer and then the cart drawer took you to the cart. And then it was like, you know, seven steps in the process and it was a ton of friction. So we just put ourselves in the, in the, shoes of the visitor. Like, what does it look like for that user journey? And then we try to back it up with some data. So when you were kind of talking about the homepage, just revisiting that for a minute, what, I mean, what do you feel that you've found from a experience works the best? I mean, is it more the mission and the story and kind of that on the homepage, or is it more, you know, a little bit of who you are, but then product focus, you know, I guess, what are you guys really finding that works the best? Usually the the combo that I like to see as a very short, small um, hero that allows some of the stuff to come up above the fold, a very unique benefit driven headline. So here's what we are, here's who we stand for very quick and to the point, big call to action. Below that, I'd like to see either some social proof or some products. So listing out four to eight of the products, you know, usually best sellers, and then you can get into more of your journey and your visitor. But the whole purpose is to, here's who we are, here's what we do, here's what to do next and how to get to know us. And we move into that um, and get them engaged in the shopping experience. And that's really what we're trying to do is get that micro commitment into the next step in the process. And that's finding some of the products that they came there for in the first place. What are some of the, like, I guess, red flags that cause people then to drop off of that and you know because i know just looking at um, bounce rates and different things like that you know um on our home page and you know, every, everything um i guess what is that number you're looking for to stay below uh, when people are hitting that and then what are some things i guess red flags that you on the home page that are causing people to maybe not stay there or have a hard journey I mean, as we know, uh, page load <laughs> is, is one thing that we've always looked for. But for the most part, what we're looking for in terms of bounce rate is usually sub 60% on a homepage. It really depends on the brand, though. I mean, we'll see some down in that 10 to 15% range, which is kind of rare. But most, as a general whole, I like to see anything under 50%. That means we've got good engagement. It means people are at least taking one more step okay. in that process as a whole. But um, some of the red flags that I look for there are a lot of about us type scenario where it's like, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at how great we are as a company versus look at all of these benefits of our products. Okay, That's probably of all of the sites I've ever looked at, which is now thousands of them, nobody screams benefits as much is they're all about, hey, look at our features. Right. And not about the benefit or the outcome that you're going to get. You know, an example is, you know, the tooth powder is, you know, you have all the benefits. It's fluoride free. It's got the polishing and the, you know, the, the whitening and all of the things that are aspects that you look for and you focus on those things. It's like, here's, you know, all of the things that our product will do, not so much that here's all the features that our product has. And that's glaring that majority of companies out there are just like, Hey, look at me, look at me instead of painting that story and telling that story and, and telling exactly what we are as a company and why we have the product the way we do and what they're going to get out of using it. It's obviously a lot of the traffic is mobile these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at least on ours, <laughs> yeah. I think it's like 66% or 67%. I had one the other day that was 94. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. With the sites that you guys are working on conversions on and everything else, um, what are you guys seeing? Because I know from we see a higher traffic standpoint from mobile, but then we see higher dollar amount conversions through desktop. Mm -hmm. Like where where's that like bridge 
why are people converting more on the desktop at a higher rate than mobile? And then how do you bring that up? It's usually double. So desktop is usually double what mobile is as far as conversion rate. So if you have one and a half, they're going to convert at 3% on desktop as a whole general rule of thumb. But what we're seeing is the problem is some are coming and they're maybe seeing a Facebook ad or they're flagging it or, te- you know, sending themselves a reminder or, you know, saving it for later and coming back to it. And then they might take the attribution and move it over to desktop. Um, we're seeing that more so with um, higher ticket items than we are lower ticket items. Um, but just because it's more real estate, you can do more research, sure. you know, but, you know, looking at a smaller price, you know, sub $100 kind of order scenario, we're still seeing a majority of revenue coming in and more and more we're seeing it being very even as far as average order value goes um, from desktop to mobile. But the conversion rate is so much higher because they have the ability to buy more product, um, you know, and see more options that you can present to them. So what we're doing in the mobile environment is looking since everything's responsive, is looking for ways that we can position additional products, um, additional bundles, and highlight and call out those additional higher price elements and let them see more of the product catalog without having to go too deep into the site. So making it very clear and concise in the step nature. And we're doing more and more of that kind of product bundle upsells and and things in the last month or two um, to really help kind of drive out and incentivize them to buy more than one product. You know, we're gonna be doing it right now. We're setting one up for a bed sheet company. They do, they have frequency is higher, but a, a purchase and the repeat rate is actually pretty high. Okay. But we're gonna be doing it just a quantity upgrade test. It's like, mm. hey, why don't you buy a second set for X, Y, and Z reason? Right. And get a five or 10% discount. And we'll test the percentage discount and see what that's gonna be. But they're again, majority mobile driven, about a $200 average order value. And we'll we'll just see what it what it looks like and try to get that frequency up so then they can you know expand on their traffic. And I know like for us like one of the big things that we're seeing too is through our mobile app a lot, um, and it's super clean and super simple and it just it's easier. Like when people sometimes we've had people like oh your site's a little hard to navigate and check out or whatever. Say cool, hey, go check out the mobile app, and they're like, "Oh, this is so awesome!" It's like you know, click, click, buy. <laughs> you're one of the few that still has one. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I mean, we, you, I think out of all the companies I've worked with in the last year, you're the only one that has a mobile app. Like, oh, wow! That's actually e-commerce focused. Right. Um, I'm sure you know more than I do as far as you know who has some, but I haven't seen it. And huh. I think it is that simplicity. It's mobile ready. It's exactly what it needs to be. Um, and that's what we're kind of doing with a lot of, of the mobile side of things because you get a Shopify store and you got all of these apps and these plugins right. and these elements and all of these things that load. You get on a mobile that's made specifically for OS, you know, and offer iOS or whatever. And there, boom, you have here's the 10 products we have and here's what it costs. And, you know, you've got your Apple ID already saved and it's, yeah. you know, simple rates to the point, you know, face ID and you're done. Yeah. Uh, So we're trying to translate a lot of that elements and being very, very simple because some of the tricks and urgency and scarcity and other elements that are kind of playing, I mean, obviously there's some of these app companies that are even getting shut down, you know, like beekeeping and stuff just got pulled from the apps or from the Shopify store Uh, completely. Yeah. I saw something about that. 25 different apps and they were huge and they literally said, no, you guys are done. And they pulled the rug and like, we don't support you anymore. You're off the marketplace. Um, So a lot of those elements are kind of, and I think people are getting kind of over tired of, you know, some of those things and the pop-ups and the distractions and, and we're trying to be more strategic about when and where they're placed. Right. Uh, And I think that's helping in that journey because people are getting more aware of it. Consumers are being more savvy on mobile, younger audiences coming into play and it's making it a little bit easier. For sure. So then after you guys kind of, go through the process and you look at the homepage, you kind of start tweaking that. What is kind of then that next part of the journey you guys look at where you're able to get some big conversion wins? Um, you know, that if anybody watching here that has their site, they should be able to go back and say, okay, I'm looking at this. Ah, that's what Justin said. Yeah. So all I'm really looking for is I'll, I'll go into the analytics data and I'll see, okay, we've got, if here's the biggest tip and my favorite report ever is just go under e-commerce 
and look at shopping behavior. So under conversions in analytics, go under e-commerce and then um, shopping behavior. And that'll tell you exactly where your drop-off point is. So it'll say, okay, here's the number of sessions we have on our store. Here's the number of sessions with product view. Here's the number of sessions with add to cart, with checkout, right. with um, transactions. You can see, okay, we've got a 75% abandoned cart rate. Or we've got, you know, product views, but nobody's adding a cart. So that means I've got a detail, I've got some issues on my product detail page. Um, then I just look for what are all of, I go down and make a list of all of the 20 things that I can think of that are causing friction that would make me not want to take the next step. Okay. Or what's confusing about it. We had one client that had um, sense involved in their product. And they were, that was number one glaring issue. We asked the audience, just did a poll and said, what's your issue? And they said, I don't know which scent to choose. The information was on the page, but they didn't care. Um, they didn't find it, it was too far down, it was buried. So we just put it up next to the quantity selector and said, here, this, this product smells like X, Y, and Z. And it increased mobile conversion rate 30%. So we just took that question that they had and made it easy, remove that friction point or that barrier to take the next step and their add to carts went up dramatically. So it's it's just really finding that fine tuned thing. So there's a handful of things I look for is the call to, is the price and the reviews above the fold. Are images easily to, are there a ton of images and are they easy to navigate on mobile? Um, is the call to action at least majority of it above the fold? Um, is there some kind of urgency or um, kind of set the expectation element like order by and get it by? Um, are the trust and security and free shipping kind of benefit statements stated? Is there a short little blurb about exactly what the product is? Okay. Um, and then reviews are, you know, prominent. If you've got them, we want to showcase them and, and put them to where they need to be. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really what we're looking for is just kind of how can we maximize above the fold? How can we give, make sure that they know that, Hey, you get free shipping, you get, you know, hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. You got 60 days to try it. You know, if they're made in the USA, you know, quality, organic ingredients, whatever we can to showcase. And we like to do that with icons um, and imagery instead of using text because nobody likes to read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't, they don't want to scroll down or eat and look at all no. the text. <laughs> no, uh, and that, that's really it. We're just looking for the friction points, the key drop-off areas in that process, and then we do our focus. And then what I generally like to do, somebody brand new, is I just blanket the site. So I'll test on a bunch of different pages. Okay to figure out what holds the most weight. Mm -hmm. So that's really what I'm measuring is, does, do they care about reviews? Do they care about, you know, the benefits of the product? Do they care about, you know, images versus icons or lifestyle versus product shots? Or, you know, do they care about bestsellers or discounts? Or what, what drives these audience members? And then that can inform future tests. So I say, okay, they really responded well to these reviews. Right. Where else can we put reviews? Okay. Or where else we put testimonials or where else can we put some of those additional elements? Um, and we just then go backwards and blanket the site. But I generally just say, let's cast a wide net, figure out what's going on. And then we kind of narrow our focus and be more strategic from there. You kind of mentioned in, you know, with on the product pages, then, uh, you know, having the information right there by the add the cart buttons, the reviews and things like that. And then once you kind of got them adding the products to the cart, where do we kind of see then from the add to cart to the final checkout process? Because obviously I know there's a couple pieces of all that. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing, it really depends on what we're selling, but we're seeing some, as long as you can limit that step. So a lot of people will have a drawer or you add to cart and it'll have a pop-up, which is like in your case, we have a, it, it shows the little pop-up widget, but it stays there. So you can see, so then you can move to the next. Some people just, it disappears. It says, oh, so-and-so was added to your cart. And then it opens a drawer and then they're taken to either cart or checkout. Um, but we like to streamline that process and be very linear. So the shortest distance between two points. And we try to eliminate that friction. So take them to the cart. If you're going to take them to the cart, take them there and then maximize that step. So that cart is usually a good place to see those bumps or recommend those additional products, do those quantity breaks, do the cart bump type scenario, because in Shopify land, we're very limited to what we can do on checkout. Sure. Um, so we just try to limit that step. So if it's got a cart or a drawer or something similar, we try to take them specifically directly to checkout from there or directly to the cart and not have the kind of that intermediate page. 
And if we do have that intermediate step, we try to then take them to check out from that intermediate step and then maximize kind of that widget and give them recommended products and give them the trust and security and all of that stuff that they're going to need. And then we just carry all of those elements over. Um, fortunately, you guys do the same, a, a good job of that and carry over those messages and carry over that social proof and that trust and those quotes and testimonials and things where majority of companies out there, specifically on Shopify, don't. They don't do anything. They don't even have their logo half the time on checkout. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's just, they take them, it's like, okay, I got them this far. Yeah. I'll just let the cards fall where they may. So it's continue selling throughout that process and making it easier. Um, and then we can get creative and do all sorts of fun stuff like pre-checkout upsells and you know, kind of interrupting and really maximizing the average order value. But all I really look about for is just lead them by the hand and take them by the hand down the path of least resistance to where we want them to go. And then we can massage the numbers and tweak them from there. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the gist of it from start to finish. Um, I mean, I mean, obviously with like Shopify and some of, you know, is you got like multiple steps once you start checking out the process, are you guys finding like single page checkouts convert better? Are you guys finding that the Shopify three or four or five or whatever steps that they, <laughs> they get checked out <laughs> converts better? I guess what, and that's kind of a loaded question too, <laughs> but there's so many things that can go into play in there, but usually a one page checkout will out convert if you can keep it simple enough, but people overcomplicate it and get shipping information and billing information and ask for your mother's maiden name and have all of these, you know, different steps and form fields in there that are unnecessary. Right. So maximizing the amount of form fields that you have in place, um, which I think that helps a little bit with the two or three step checkout in Shopify, because people are kind of used to it. You know, I mean, even Amazon has a few steps to check out, even with one click. Right. So they're kind of used to that, that flow. And it's very easy. It's micro commitments. It's only few, few form fields, usually autofill. And it allows you to kind of take that next step. But one page checkout, if you can maximize it and actually put all of the elements, create the urgency, use the social proof, back it up with all of your benefit statements, um, the better off it's you're going to be in the long run. And I'm even doing tests right now where, you know, changing something as simple as the button label to say secure order um, on the checkout instead of, you know, complete order or whatever it says is like improving something like 24% on the checkout. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So it could be something as simple as that or adding a testimonial below the button, adding your better business bureau logo if you have it, you know, simple things like that you can have a, a big impact, but it's carrying that message over is, is probably the biggest thing um, that really matters as opposed to, you know, the number of steps in that checkout. Okay. Gotcha. Um, well, we only got a couple minutes left. I wanted to uh, tell people where they can get more information about you. I know you have your book that covers a lot of these insights and a lot of the split testing that you guys have done and things like that. Yeah. Um, you can find more information about me going to conversionfanatics.com. You can search uh, Justin Christensen on Amazon. Find me there. If you want to connect with me on social, go to Clixo, C-L-Y-X-O.com slash Justin Christensen, all one word. And you can link to all my social channels and find out information how to get a hold of me. Awesome. And then just any last insights or tips you want to leave everybody with before we go? Don't assume that something is going to win or be better. Always test it. That's the biggest thing that I've seen. <laughs> Uh, one recently, a guy said, oh, let's just make that change. And it's actually hurting his conversions by 30%. Oh, no. So let's <laughs> just test it. Test it out. Yep. Cool. Well, awesome. Justin, I really appreciate you coming on Making Bank today, sharing your insights. Uh, just an honor to have you on the show, picking your brain from, you know, just being able to let people know um, what to do, what to look for, um, kind of giving them that overview and insights on, you know, different ideas for split testing and just how to look to start from an optimization standpoint for their site. So thanks again for coming on Making Bank. Yeah, thanks for having me. I am Josh Felber. You are watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary.